Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and 30-day free trial at www.audibletrial.com slash the nerd core. Over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. Hello, nerds. You're listening to an episode on the Nerdcore podcast feed. If you're feeling generous, please consider pledging to a tier on our Patreon at patreon.com slash the nerdcore. We have tiers as low as $1 per month. Thanks so much, and enjoy the episode. Hello, nerds. You're listening to an episode on the Nerdcore podcast feed. If you're feeling generous, please consider pledging to a tier on our Patreon at patreon.com slash the nerdcore. We have tiers as low as $1 per month. Thanks so much, and enjoy the episode. Welcome back. You're listening to the Nerdcore Podcast, the podcast where reviews, movies, and talks that nerd shit. This is episode 287, and it is your nerd news for the week. As always, this is your nerd. You're going to hear it with the host of the show alongside my wonderful co host, Young Yoda. What's up, what's up, everybody? Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Uh, I did what I would, I did what uh, Nikki told me to do. I put all my sound bites here on my stream deck. Well, play some. Well, damn it, they're, never mind, the files are on my other one. Oh, uh, gotta fucking fix this. Damn it, I hate this. Ah, yeah. Uh, it's not prepared. Really professional over here. Not prepared. Wait, I think I do have the, Aiden, are you in here? Are you over here? <laughs> yeah, no, Aiden, no. Damn it, can put none of these because then the files are not on my, on my, damn it, I hate this. I had a really clever thing to do here, but no. Uh, how you doing, Brad? I'm doing well. Doing well. How you doing, Ro? Doing pretty good, too. Here, you ready to get started with the news, man? I'm really, really, really hyped for today's news. We got a lot of stuff to talk about. Stuff that we have to wait to talk about until today. Yep, let's run through it. All uh, right. I'm ready. Yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready. Uh, so, by the way, guys, I told you guys that video versions of these shows will start happening. Actual, like, recorded video versions with me and Brad's faces and stuff. I just got to wait for Alex to send me the uh, overlays for all these shows. For some of these shows, some of them will just live as regular uh, videos with the with the uh, with the edits and stuff in the back, with the edits and the and the audio with them for on the video on the YouTube's. But uh, yeah, uh, trying to help Brad not do so much of the work here. But uh, whatever the fuck Rubbles just said. <laughs> <laughs> whatever. Uh, clear as mud. Clear as mud, right? <laughs> All right. Shut up, Brad. <laughs> What's he called that? <laughs> In breaking news, man, this is one I've been wanting to talk about for a bit. Uh, from Dwayne Johnson himself, the, the Rock, at The Rock on his Twitter. So he quote tweeted somebody, and it was uh, like a picture, I think. It was, I was so excited for The Rock to play Black Adam that I sculpted him as the character in one fit scale. Which was pretty cool sculpture, right, Brad? Yeah, it looks good. And then The Rock said this, very cool, man. Thank you. Amazing detail. The project has been with me for over 10 years. Uh, production begins this July. Appreciate the support. So there we have our confirmation, man. Looks like we're uh, getting our 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 Black Adam is going to start uh, filming in July. I, well, I can't believe this project's been going on for ten years. Yeah, uh, I know Shazam. We've been reporting on since the first year we've been doing this. Yeah, dude. So, dude, I am so excited, dude. I I can't I can't really explain my. I it's just I I I can't believe it. This is finally gonna happen. I'm glad that the Rock is still doing it. You know, part part of it, the chance that the part of it, the reason why the Rock is still doing it is because his company is producing it. So he had to have some leeway in there. But um, I'm still happy that this is happening. It's this is something I've been waiting for for a while too, and I've been you know kind of just been patient with it. And it looks like we're finally going to get it, dude. Yeah, I, I mean, we this is one of those films we we saw what they did with Shazam and we we're like. Well, hopefully Black Adam makes a way into it, and mm -hmm. luckily they're going to make him his own movie. Yeah, very excited, dude. Uh, July, so uh, it's a long way to July, but uh, don't don't think you will have like silent ears because you know we've been getting Batman casting left and right. So I would say that casting could start like around like you know spring. I uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we heard a few names floated around at the end of the year here. Yeah, very very excited, man. I'm I'm so happy. Um, so with you know, other than that, Brad, I want to put in some like stones here. What are the chances of uh, Zachary Levi showing up in this as Shazam? Um, 
I would say pretty high because you know Black Adam's gonna be the next villain in Shazam too. Mm hmm. Yeah. So I, I would say very high, at least at the end, or some kind of teaser. Yep. Very excited, dude. Very excited, and I uh, wanted to talk about that. And uh, I can't. I can't wait for to see that first. Uh, that first uh, look of the costume on him because it's gonna look so badass. Yeah, well, everything on the rock looks pretty badass. You can put him yeah. in a tutu. You can put him in, which he has worn. You know. There you go. Yep. Yep. I think I think that's like every wrestler in every movie has to wear a tutu at some point. Yeah, if I think I John Cena has too. <laughs> I think John Cena has too. Yeah, John Cena, Hulk Hogan, everyone. Pretty much everybody, right? Yeah. Yep. What's it called? Uh. But in the meantime, you know, we're just going to have to keep waiting for this for until it happens. But I'm glad that we've, we're getting some uh, some updates on when this will start filming. So July, around the time that the Batman comes out, we'll, what's it called? This movie will go into production. So that that's going to be freaking awesome. I'm excited. Oh, wait, no, I'm the, sorry. The, Ju- July 2020, I'm sorry. That's around the time that the, the, the Batman will, will be filming as well. So we might have two DC movies filming at the same time. Yeah, DC's bringing it, um, and I'm looking forward to it, especially after what the Joker has done. Yep. This is interesting. So I, I could see, you know, Black Adam coming out in at least early 2021, dude. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So let's go ahead and move on to the box office report of the weekend. Uh, did definitely, did I say that Maleficent was going to open less than Joker? I believe you did. Yeah, I ate my words pretty bad. <laughs> so at the bottom five, anything standing out to you, Brad? Mm, Judy. He refuses Judy's to quit. still going strong. Yeah. Still going strong, dude. Rachel Zellweger as Judy. I'm going to go with Hustlers, bro. Hustlers refuses to quit. Yeah, Hustlers doing really well. Uh, I, I think we might get some more movies uh, with Jennifer Lopez because of this. Yeah, you you would you know in in a top ten that doesn't have the Lion King anymore, Hustlers is still kicking ass, dude. Mm-hmm. That's awesome at two million fifty thousand dollars, by the way, for those of you who are wondering. And dude, I am so so happy that this movie is making as much as it is. Also, we got to bring up Downton Abbey, which has, I think it's up to eighty eight million now total in the states domestically so that's pretty crazy nice yeah yep all right brad let's go take a look at the number five uh the movie that has not made the top five the movie has not made his their uh their budget back yet uh gemini man at an eight million five hundred thousand dollars we have at number five and number four we have the adams family dropping to sixteen million fifty seven thousand seven dollars i heard some really good things about the adams family guys like you know i was seeing twitter just kind of like having fun with it so that was pretty cool um, the Adams Family at sixteen million fifty-seven thousand uh, seven dollars. Okay, I already read that. I'm sorry. Zombieland Two Double Tap dropping to twenty-six. Oh no, that didn't drop. That debuted. I'm sorry. Debut. It debuts at twenty-six million seven hundred twenty-five thousand dollars. Joker at number one. At number two again with uh, well, not again, but drops to twenty-nine million two hundred five thousand dollars from its fifty thousand. change. Yeah, pocket change at it's this all, point. It's all pocket change now. It's it's already getting close to the top five. Uh, the top five rated R releases. Of all yeah. time. So the next one as well, at debuting this weekend, was Maleficent, Mistress of Evil, at $36 million. So congratulations, man. That's, I mean, a lot of things I'm looking at this. I'm looking at Zombieland 2 opening up pretty well, because I don't really know the budget on that movie. I'm not sure either. Um, I wouldn't imagine it being too high. Most I zombie don't... movies aren't. I don't think so either. But uh, Zombieland 2... Box office. Mojo. Um, I hope they have the budget. I'm not just doing this for nothing. The budget is 42 mil. Nice. And uh, and it has 32 million worldwide. Looks like it's going to be a little bit of a struggle to make it back. But, you know, it's not at the worst. Uh, at, at its worst feet, right? It's still no, doing pretty good. No, it, it, it's no Gemini Man who will probably not reach its budget yeah, yeah that's budget. that's the thing that sucks about that man um and just for shits and giggles what's the most successful zombie movie oh of course world war z yeah i forgot about that sorry yeah world war z made like a uh, 500 half a million dollars yeah that's well, right and the, the first zombie land did really well if i remember correctly yes and also they've kind of become cult favorites 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, these movies just end up becoming cult classics. But oh, yeah, Zombieland is the third most uh, successful one. Yeah. It made at one hundred and two million three hundred ninety one thousand five hundred forty dollars. It won't make that in its its run, but it'll probably make between seventy to eighty million. It's just surprising to me. Well, first of all, how long it took to make this sequel? I mean, how long it took to the sequel? Do you know to happen? And also, well, how how yeah, how fast well, it went into production with Ruben Fleischer coming back to it. Well, you got to remember, you got a lot of big names there now that they weren't big at that time. Yeah. I mean, Woody Harrelson, of course, is a big name. Yeah. But I don't think his career was like the whole yeah. solo Star Wars. Mm. I don't even think that. I think the first Zombie Land came out before True Detective season one. Yeah. So, so a lot of these actors I, are Oscar nominated nominated co- co- actors. And yeah, a lot of, yeah. I don't think they were during that first Zombie Land. No, I don't think so. Then that first movie didn't come out before Social Network, right? So Eisenberg has hadn't popped yet. Yeah. yeah. So I, that that's the difference I think between this. This one costs more money to make just because to get everyone back on board. That was going to cost more money. Yeah, of course, of course. And uh, yeah, that seems to be the case. Uh, next week, there's like a couple of movies. I don't think these are gonna be a big a big hit at the box office. You got Black and Blue. Um, these are like the wide releases, but I know that the lighthouse will expand its wide release, uh, next weekend. So I already got my tickets for that. And then just when I bought my tickets, I found out that they're playing it at the theater near me now. So there you go. Uh, I think I'm going to return my s- tickets if I can't go on Friday and then just go on Sunday when I come back to my room. Makes sense. Yeah. But less of a travel. Yeah, very looking forward to the lighthouse. Uh, once that opens up, I. By the way, I think that the numbers were actually pretty big. You know, they were open for in eight theaters, the lighthouse, and it made like two hundred k. I think that's that's really good for just eight theaters. Yeah, same with the um, what was the other movie that the, uh, Jojo Rabbit was like in uh, like fourteen, and it was like at five hundred k. Yeah, that, that's extremely good, but that's what you get when you make good movies. Yeah, and these these two movies, if it's any movie that have been getting the best word of mouth after their release at uh, the film festivals, it's these two, man. I mean, we've been talking about The Lighthouse since Khan, and that was like, what, in March? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that's a it's, a, it's a huge thing, man, and Jojo Rabbit, of course, after winning at TIFF, we, that's, a, that's a big thing as well, but we've got Black and Blue Countdown and Western Stars... And then, uh, yeah, Western Stars. I don't think any of these movies. I think Black and Blue might. That's an interesting one. Uh, it's about like a black cop who finds out that you know that there's some corruption going on, and oh, has... when's that? When's that Bonnie and Clyde movie supposed to drop? Queen or and has Slim. Already dropped? Queen and Slim. I think that's November. Yeah. Fred, Fred. Um, Queen and Slim. Queen and Slim. Queen and Slim. It is November twenty seventh, Thanksgiving weekend. Okay. Yeah. I'm looking forward to that one. Yeah. Same with Knives Out. Comes out that same weekend. Okay. Yep. And uh, that's that, That's going to be pretty pretty good. But yeah, I think the box office stays mostly the same. I think top two, of course, you're going to have uh, Joker and, I mean, Maleficent and Joker. Don't know which one will beat the other, but I think at this point, Joker is just doing a uh, a uh, fight for the fight to be in the top five uh, rated R movies right now. Uh, yeah, I'm... I mean, DC doesn't care. They they made a successful movie. Yeah, so that's all they care about. They made a really successful movie. I heard that they were very apprehensive. I was reading stuff like they were very apprehensive. They kept it at a small budget to kind of deter uh, Phillips from doing it, and you know it ended up really working for them. Seven hundred thirty-seven million dollars worldwide, yeah. Brad. And this is what needed to happen for DC yeah. to get off that whole kick of just not taking risks. Yeah. And hopefully we see more of that. Yeah, this is this is huge, dude. I mean, so now it's at number nine for the rated R. And it, let me see who they've got to beat. They've got The Hangover Part 2 and 1 to beat and The Matrix Reloaded and Deadpool 2 to get into the top five. I mean, I, I just got to say, I feel mm-hmm. bad for Joaquin Phoenix, though. Oh, yeah, that's the thing that sucks, man. I feel uh, bad for Joaquin Phoenix because I don't know how he's going to up <laughs> his performance. You can't this. up that, dude. You can't. It's crazy. Uh, I, I can't. I don't know if it's if this is going by domestic. Yeah, because domestic, the what's it called? The numbers are different because if you look at domestic, the Passion of the Christ is number one, which, what's it called? 
it's our what's it called? It's not domestically. It's not gonna make that much here, like the three hundred three hundred seventy million. But if you look at number one, I think it's Deadpool who did uh, the most worldwide at seven hundred eighty five. So mm-hmm. it's these numbers are really confusing. But what's it called? Uh, I I'm really excited for this to do as much as it's going to, man. And I'm really going to uh keep keep rooting for this, man. This is huge, 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 Let's huge. Go. Yep. All right. With that being said, I think that's the box office. We'll wait to see what happens next weekend. But in the meantime, that's our numbers for this week. And we're going to open up with some huge Batman casting, dude. They, they they, heard me. They were like, come on, guys. It's been a while. We haven't we haven't done casting. Yeah, we haven't heard anything about casting yet. So I want to do the first one before we get into the next one. So, because I think I have a lot more to talk about with uh, with with uh, with the Riddler casting, because just what kind of transpired before it before it. And mm-hmm. so, look, we've got our Catwoman, our Selena Kyle from Boris Kit over at the Hollywood Reporter. Zoe Kravitz, the star, is Catwoman in the Batman. The actress tested last week opposite Robert Pattinson, Matt Reeves, and Warner Brothers' upcoming The Batman has found its Catwoman. Zoe Kravitz has nabbed the role of one of the highest profile members of the Cape Crusaders rogue gallery. According to several sources, the decision came down over the weekend after a rigorous testing process that saw Ana de Armas from Blade Runner 2049, Brad. Uh, mm-hmm. Ella Ella Belinska, I don't know who that is. Elsa Elsa Gon uh, Elsa Gonzalez, huh? Isa. Isa. Oh, I'm sorry, I haven't seen an L. Isa Gonzalez from Baby Driver, and Zoe Kravitz, read with Robert Pattinson, who is set to play the Dark Knight. Testing process occurred over the first week of the month, and the four were then narrowed to to two late last week. Reeves is directing what is described as a grounded take with a large rogues gallery, as the antagonist Jeffrey Wright is already on board as Batman Alley. Ally, Commissioner Jim Gordon. All right, man. Huge news, dude. Uh, first of all, what did I tell you, Brad? When we got those first initial reports of who was it? Um, it was the that, the girl from uh from 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 Mission Impossible Fallout. Uh, uh, Rebecca Ferguson. I think it was Ferguson. I can't remember. I can't. Well, remember. and Anna De Armas, we had heard about before yeah. too. And I said, I think Reeves has something more to say here. I think he should cast a black woman or a woman of color. You know, a woman of color. What did I say? I said, it's got to happen. I think it's what's going to happen. And I, and I wanted it. And, I, and look at this, man. He, pra- he practically casted the most attractive woman ever, dude. Yeah, I, I'm not sure I've seen her in anything else before, though. Unless She's in a bring something up. Westworld, bro. Oh, yeah. Yeah, she was also the voice of Catwoman in, uh, in uh, what's it called, um... In the Lego Batman. Oh, that helps. Yeah, she was in Big Little Lies <laughs> season two. She's in a lot of things, man. But I'm, I don't, what's it called? I do. I can't remember who she played in. Uh, she who she played in Westworld season in season two. But she was in that one, dude. Um, also, she has been in. Um, what's it called? What's that one? <laughs> By the way, I just wanted to say that uh, Lisa Bonet can't just can't stop winning here, man. Her husband is Aquaman. Her daughter is a. Uh, her daughter is what's it called? Um, um, her daughter is Catwoman. So like, she's got the DC. Uh, what's it called? Family right there, dude. Yeah, and yeah. um. Oh, she was I'm in sure Mad Max. I'm sure she'll do well. Yeah, Mad Max Fury Road, Brad. Hmm. She was in Mad okay. Max Fury Road, Fantastic Beast One and Two, X Men First Class, uh, Spider-Man, Spider-Man, Spider-Man Into the Spider Verse, Dope. She, ooh, Dope is good. Um, have you ever watched Dope, Brad? Brad. Uh, no, I have not. Dope is good, dude. Uh, the Lego Batman, of course, and then uh, Westworld season two. So, yeah, congratulations to Zoe Kravitz, dude. This is uh, this is awesome news, bro. And uh, yeah, I'm glad. Some people have been complaining their asses off, like, oh, Catwoman should be white, whatever. Like, whatever, guys. Shut the fuck up. This is basically top five most beautiful woman. And plus, she's like one of the best, at, a really, really good actress. Have you seen her work? So, she's she's amazing for this job, Brad. Brad? Yeah, I'm still here. I was looking up something. Yeah. No, but, just... originally, but Catwoman's been played... By a black woman before. By a black woman multiple times before. So yeah. I don't see why anybody is up in arms. I mean, the Halle Berry one wasn't very good. We'll, we'll but she wasn't the fault of that. No, 
that that was just the whole movie itself. Mm-hmm. Yep. But uh, for this one, I mean, the cast is looking pretty stacked. I can't wait to see the trailer so I can get a full kind of idea of mm-hmm. what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, but yeah, man, this is this is shaping up to be a pretty good cast. And now we can go into the next one. Um, this one's oh god, this is great casting to me, Brad. I mean, this one's amazing casting, but the, the what's it called? This is great casting of Zoe Kravitz, but this next one, this is fucking amazing casting, dude. I drink your milkshake. I drink, I drink your milk milkshake. Down. The Batman cast Paul Dano as the Riddler. So Matt Reeves is directing Robert Pattinson in the film, of course, from Boris Kitt again and Eric Couch over at the Hollywood Reporter. Matt Reeves is directing Baron Pattinson in the film. Filmmaker Matt Reeves has found his Riddler uh, for the Batman. Paul Dano has signed on as the classic villain Warner Brothers announced Thursday. Dano's version of the character will be named Edward Nashton. Oh, he's that he is named that though. He's referred to that and Edward Nigma in the comics. Oh, so they're going with Nashton. Okay. Well, you know. Yeah, well. whatever. It's the same name they use for the guy. Uh, the oh. man, the man who in the comics later goes by the name Edward Nigma, uh, and adopts the villainous persona Frank Gorshin, and John Aston played the villain on the 1960s uh, TV series, while Jim Carrey played him in 1995's Batman Forever. We don't want to remember that. Uh, we try to forget that. Yeah, which but was directed by George. Th- this, you can tell they're doing this as kind of Batman. I think when he's first coming into being Batman. Yeah. Especially if they're using all these character names. Mm-hmm. So they're, they're, they might show where the Riddler comes from and the like. Mm-hmm. Ron Pattinson is starring in the, Bat- in the Batman. We can only crab it set to play Catwoman. And Jeffrey Wright on board as Batman's ally. Okay, yeah, I already did this. Uh, yeah, I read this already. Uh, Daniel was recently nominated for an Emmy for his role on Showtime limited series Escape at Danamara. And the actor directed, co-wrote, and produced the critically acclaimed 2018 film Wildlife. His other film credits involve Love and Mercy, Prisoners. Ooh, that's a really good film, Brad. With uh, Jake Gyllenhaal and uh, Hugh Jackman. Uh, 12 Years a Slave, There Will Be Blood, Little Miss Sunshine, Youth, and Ogja, among others. So, dude, this is, I, I mean, this is stellar casting, dude. He's got the look of Riddler. Plus, if you guys have never seen, what's it called, uh... Uh, prisoners he plays a really despicable character in that movie and the only reason we have not reviewed that movie is because i'm waiting for denis Villeneuve month when we do that for when dune comes out in november next year so we've got i'm waiting for that one i'm waiting to pull the trigger on that one but he plays a really despicable character in that movie dude but for the rest of you that haven't seen prisoners i'm sure most of you have seen there will be blood yes 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 and he's amazing there will be blood as well oh yeah this this is stellar casting dude yeah, I, I can already see him as Riddler. It's it's really no question. Yep, yep. And uh, this is this is awesome. So what I was saying that why I like this casting the most is just because of what transpired before. So now we know that Jonah Hill was in the running for this. This is what he wanted to play. He wanted to play the yeah. Riddler. Except Jonah Hill wanted ten million dollars for some reason. Yeah, yeah. Jonah Hill wanted ten mil. Uh, Whereas, like, for some reason. We don't even we don't even know if he's making if 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 Panson's even making ten mil. Well, I don't believe Panson is. I mean, I don't yeah. believe anybody's making too huge of money on this thing. No, no, not one bit, dude. I'm like, I think I think about this, and I'm like, what the fuck, man? Th- like, this just tells me Jonah didn't want this role very badly. No, I don't at, think at this so. Time, I don't think he wanted it. No, and now there was so now it was either reported he was going to be the Riddler or Penguin, but now it's looking at the fact that we got. The casting of Riddler this fast after Jonah dropped out, it looks like he was really chasing the Riddler. He was going yeah. towards the Riddler. It still would have been interesting to see Jonah in the role, but I don't think he really wanted this if that it came down to that. Uh, now I think Jonah can go and direct another project, dude, which would, I would be really happy to see. But now the now the question comes down to who should we get as Penguin now? We're gonna start looking at our Penguin ca- casting. And dude, did you see? I I sent you the I sent you the 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 the, the tweet. Right after this casting came up, Vincent D'Onofrio quoted it, uh, quoted Matt Reeves' tweet, and he said, hey, Matt, and I just, my, my mind directly went to <laughs> Vincent D'Onofrio as fucking Penguin. Yeah, I can see that. Um, or or a Maroney. Uh, true. You know, uh, yeah. Alfred or, Molina. Uh, Alfred Molina. Yeah, I, I mean, a straight up gangster. I could see it. 
Yeah, it's just, dude, I'm like really, really excited. Like, you know, this movie is getting great. Uh, oh, they also got the uh, guy for the score already. They got a uh, Michael Giancarlo who did the score for like the Planet of the Apes film. So great, great score there. And it looks like we're kind of moving pretty, fa- pretty good with this. And dude, I can't wait for more casting because th- these two casting already have been great. Yeah, and the question now comes up: What exactly the story is going to be? I yeah. think it's going to be. They've already said it's going to be based on Batman being more of the world's greatest detective yeah. than anything. But I think it's going to be when Batman starts. Yeah, I think so too. The world's greatest detective. Yeah, I think so too. And uh, you know, they talked to Panson as well, and Panson was like, you know, I'm really reason why I really want to do this character. He goes, uh, goes not not a lot of the characters I, I what's it called? I seem to um that I seem to gravitate towards our heroes, and he doesn't think that Batman really is much of a hero either, you know? Because it's true. I mean, anybody who really, like, reads the comics of Batman, like, Bruce Wayne is really on a really different plane. Because cause he's, Bruce, what's it called? Batman Bruce Wayne, he's such a really interesting character in that, that he's he's not a hero, but he's also not a villain. He works well, in, a, in a very gray area. I mean... On the anti-hero spectrum, he he's no Deadpool. No, of course no. he's not. He, he he has a code where he doesn't kill anyone, but does he work outside of law enforcement? For sure. Don't lose yeah. superheroes. Yeah, but he's also just a really interesting character because he's he's just has so much trauma that he's got. You know, his parents and everything, and he's such a complex character that I think that you know we've had a lot of great performances, but the way that that, that Panson is kind of describing himself, really coming to this character. It's like, I think we're going to have a very different take on Bruce in this one. As long as they don't have an origin story of that, hopefully they just go with what happened at the end of Joker there. If, nah. if that is what, 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 and yeah, whatever the was going on with Joker there, hopefully they play off that and nah. they show us another origin story. No, nah, I think that, I think they're just going to start right, right as a uh, Pattinson is kind of like, what's it called is Bruce in the city uh, grown up Bruce like you know just starting off I I have a feeling that this is going to be set somewhere in the 90s like, I mean that that's a, that would be a good time frame because I think the 80s is too probably grunge yeah in a I, way but 90s mm-hmm. is probably good yeah, I, I just can't wait to see what this Gotham will look under uh, Matt Reeves so let's go ahead and move on to some other news looks like I had to put this one in because uh <laughs> this is just uh, oh god, Leto. Oh god. Okay, so from the Hollywood Reporter over with uh with written by Kim Masters, you've got to stop this. Jared Leto fumed over a new Joker movie. The actor who played the character in Suicide Squad felt alienated and upset when Warner Brothers greenlit Tom Phillips' version with Joaquin Phoenix instead. Just how unhappy was Jared Leto over Joker? As Tom Phillips' dark tale on the villain looks likely to gross more than seven hundred million worldwide. Sources tell the Hollywood Reporter that Leto's frustration that Warner Brothers was moving for, uh, mo- uh, moving ahead with the uh, Phillips project was so great early on that he tried to throttle the rival Joker in its cradle. According to sources familiar with Leto's behavior, when the Oscar-winning actor learned that Phillips that the Phillips project not only had completed b- had competed bitterly complained bitterly to his agents at CAA who also represent Phillips, but asked his music manager Irving Asoff. To call the leader of Warner's parent company, it's unclear whether it was Time Warner's Jeff ba- Books or AT&T's Randall Stevenson, depending on the timing. The idea was to get Warner's to kill the Phillips film. <laughs> A source in Leto's camp denies that the actor made this request, and Azov declined to comment. Azov and Leto have since parted ways. Okay. Uh, THR previously reported that the 47-year-old star who played the grinning crime lord in 2016's Suicide Squad thought Warners had strung him along with promises of his own Joker standalone film only to greenlit the green, green light the Phillips uh, version with Joaquin Phoenix instead. Ironically, Warners thought the Phillips project would be a, a small movie and nervous about its dark tone greenlit the, pic, the picture reluctantly with a small budget that some of the studios were hoping would discourage Phillips from making it. Warners declined to comment. Uh, all right, man. Um, yeah, I I think that this is just I can just imagine myself like just let just calling them and like hey like I like come on guys like what what do we when you get someone like Phoenix on board I I think what's it called WB on here will be like there's no way we're losing Phoenix with this like you can feel whatever you want to but we got fucking walking Phoenix walk fucking fucking Phoenix there's no way we're gonna lose this guy. I mean to play devil's advocate though. 
we never got to see Jared Leto's Joker in full. Mm -hmm. Wait, was he going to be as good as Joaquin Phoenix? Says? No, but then again, Suicide Squad had its own issues that I don't think you can blame Leto all about. No, of course not. No, we, we know Suicide Squad was a mess in the writing and the directing and pretty much everything. So, and then to hear it, they left most of his portrayal of the Joker on the cutting room floor. Mm -hmm. So I can see where he might be somewhat angry. I, I mean, he, he put a mm -hmm. lot of effort into this character and yeah. for it just to get cut and then for the studio just to go ahead and green light another Joker movie where he wasn't playing the Joker. Yeah. But Granted, to be fair, I'm glad they did because, mm -hmm. you know, we got a great movie. But yeah. I can see where he's coming from, except, you know, I, I think he went about it all wrong trying to get the movie just stopped. It wasn't going to happen. <laughs> it's 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 ridiculous, dude. Uh, but looking at it, like I was saying that uh, that honestly, dude, I I looking at what we got, I'm I'm good. With, and there's reports now that Leto is done with the character. And I, I'm glad kind of because after after Joker, I don't think we need another interpretation from him. I think well, I I don't think we need another Joker movie. No, I don't think I don't you're ever, gonna get one. I, I with with the portrayal by Ledger and the portrayal by Phoenix. I don't think you're ever gonna get it, any any portrayal up to those standards. I think it's as good as it's gonna get, dude. Yeah, and I think it's gonna be. I I think we should take a break now, unless we are think unless Little somehow matches something up and comes back in Birds of Prey or something or Suicide Squad two. I don't know what if that'll happen. I don't think so. Uh, just I think after this, we're we should be just taking a break from Joker. I think that we've really gotten the best one yet. Uh, for for this modern times, uh, with the new DC banner and stuff, and I think that we should just kind of take a break with it and. I'm sorry, but if you were to tell me that, like, if you were to tell, if you were to ask me to see Joaquin again or or Leto, I'm going with Joaquin like 100. percent Oh, of course, and I, I mean just basically keep Joker animated, let Mark Hamill voice him, and yeah. call it a day. Call it a day, man. Uh, but on another front, that God, man. So last week something happened. Uh, so there was a re there's reports that. They were going to add a second villain to Vol to Venom 2 with, with Carnage, of course. It was going to be Shriek uh, because they wanted to add another villain. Uh, God knows why Sony does a lot of things that they do. Um, it looks like they're, not, they're, they're casting already for it. And it looks like they already have their Shriek from Variety over at Justin Kroll, who wrote the, who wrote the article. Venom 2, Naomi Harris eyed to play villain Shriek opposite Tom Hardy. So Naomi Harris is in talks to play Spider-Man villain Shriek in Sony's Volume Two. In Volume Two, Sony's Venom Two with uh, with Tom Hardy returning as the titular anti-hero. Andy Serkis is on board to direct, and Michelle Williams and Woody Harrelson are also reprising their roles. The original film was a huge hit to the studio when it premiered in 2018, grossing 213 million at the box office, at the domestic box office, and a massive 855 million worldwide. It followed Hardy as Eddie Brock, a journalist who becomes the host to the alien entity known as Venom. So Shriek is Carnage's romantic interest in the comics, so she's bound to team with Harrelson in this movie to face off against Hardy's Venom. Sony recently did an untitled Marvel sequel to October 2020, which, which superhero enthusiasts are speculating is Venom 2, possibly giving it the same release dates as its predecessor. Yeah. Um, so the producers are returning as the same producers alongside Hutch Parker. Uh, Kelly Marcel is penning the script. So whatever, yeah. Um, Harris, of course, she was in the great, the amazing movie um, Moonlight. She's always go she's also going to be the new 007 in No Time to Die, and she was also in a uh, what's it called Black and she's going to be in Black and Blue, which is a movie that's coming out this weekend. And uh, Brad, do we need a second villain in Venom Two? Um, no offense, to Naomi Harris. She's a great actress. Amazing actress. Yes, but there is no need for any other villain other than Carnage. Carnage is one of the biggest villains ever to grace any Spider-Man comic, and especially being the the if Venom is an anti-hero, then Carnage is his basically villain. Look, so here's the thing that, that, that's all you need. Here's the thing that bothers me about this. By the way, Naomi Harris is an amazing actress, one of the best right now, and I think she's incredible. This. I feel like we're going to add a backstory to Carnage in this movie. And this is where I have a problem with Venom 1. Because Riot is such a freaking flat villain. It didn't even make sense to have Riot in this movie. 
It should have been something else. And we could have added this backstory to Carnage in the first film to lead up to the big battle in the second one, where it just doesn't make sense if we're going to be taking like almost an hour, 30 to 40 minutes, and 30 to 40 minutes just to set up the romantic interest of to Carnage. Yeah, it, it seems kind of like a waste just yeah. to do this. And as uh, I was once told before, when you tried to fit 10 pounds of shit in a 5-pound bag, you end up with 5 pounds of shit on the floor. Yeah. <laughs> God damn it, Brad. <laughs> That's a good one. Um, it's just This just reminds me of, like, Spider-Man 3, Amazing Spider-Man 2, when they try to put too many... Too many uh, villains in the same movie and it all just comes kind of tumbling down and that's the thing is they don't need to go i i get it spider-man has a great you know has a great amount of villains that he, they can pick and choose from um craven and all that but to me i think all anybody wants to see is just if you're gonna have a venom movie venom versus carnage and yeah. then if you're going to throw Spider-Man in there, yeah, Spider-Man versus Carnage. Yeah. That's the thing is, I think anybody who knows the Carnage character and knows him well knows he can hold a movie alone as the villain. If they do it right. Yep, yep, yep. So, th- th- so this, all this is make me question what the fuck, if Sony even knows what they're doing, which I think from the first Venom is uh, we got that answer with a no, they do not. Yeah, and this is the stuff that kind of frustrates me about this movie. It's just that I I I don't know what the attempt is here. I it just it's all it's like I don't know, dude. I, this is why Jason Inman should be writing all the movies. Yeah, Jason. So why Jason needs to write Fantastic Four? First of all, you know we don't think we forgot about that. We're still campaigning for this, man. Yeah, get get Jason to write Fantastic Four. Yeah, I love how Daryl's just m- messing around in the background. But uh, this is why you joined. Yeah, the, this is why well, you joined I just the... got Dixie thrown in with me too. So. Oh, good lord! This is, but don't worry, we're getting there, Brad. We're getting there to getting you a mic. <laughs> uh, but th- this is just something I'm gonna have to wait and see, man. And uh, you know, I'm not gonna watch this movie opening weekend. We're not gonna review this. I'm just telling you this right no, off the bat. No, I'll eventually get to it, but it's yeah. not a. Uh, it's not high on my list to be actually at the studio yeah. beforehand. Look. In October 2020, if there's something else playing that I'm gonna get to watch, I'm not gonna waste my time with uh with uh with uh this movie. And I probably get to it on a discount day, but chances are I'm not watching this next year for until like probably like when it gets a fucking Blu-ray release or something. I'll rent when, it. when we're forced to by Patreon supporters. <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> that's that's the plan, Brad. <laughs> Uh, but hopefully the Patreon supporters do not make us, uh, what's it called, to do that. I mean, if it continues the way it is, because uh, we just reached our first goal. Yeah, first goal, buddy. First goal. Yeah, but we'll talk about that right now at the housekeeping. But we still got news here to go. But I'm just checking the October 2020, what's it called, uh, the schedule here for 2020. Uh, looks like we've got... God damn, bro. The Halloween kills in October 6th on October 16th. Yeah, chances are I'm watching that before I ever watch what's it called? Uh, Venom 2. So, um, God damn, those dogs are... What are they doing? Wrestling? Well, she's got a cone on her head. I don't <laughs> I know forgot. if yeah. you've seen that, but she's got a cone. She just rams everything. Oh, my God. All right. Um, there was a lot of news going on about an Edge of Tomorrow sequel. And it looks like... Oh, Con- well, well, before we get into that, I have a question. Yes, sir. Why don't they just change the name of that to Live, Die, Repeat? Because that's how I always remember the fucking movie. <laughs> that was the uh, that was the slogan for it, right? Yeah, the tagline was better than the title <laughs> of the freaking movie. What if that's, what's, that's the name for the sequel, man? <laughs> I will go see it. <laughs> yeah, Live, Die, Repeat. Comicbookmovies.com has the... Uh, that was the what's it called? It has the dish here, man. It looks like we've got our Edge of Tomorrow sequel ready to go with a script is ready to turn in, man. I, I got to ask, though. Did you like The Edge of Tomorrow? I have not watched it. Ah. Yes, I have not watched you, it. You, you know, it's one of the better Tom Cruise movies. Yeah. Believe it or not. I won't go as far to say that it's better if it's better than I won't ask if it's better than Eyes Wide Shut. But uh, yeah. Nah, nah. I, I mean, it's hard to beat Kubrick, especially yeah. into life Kubrick. Yeah. 
All right. So the long-awaited edge to Mars sequel and a whole lot more. Yeah, whatever. Jumpers, one that I feel like I know. Okay, they asked them. You're, oh, what's going on here? I just want to know where he talks about the sequel, man. I'm going to try to read this all damn thing. Um, so, uh. Uh, Dan was going wow. a lot about this, the... Wow, wow, comic book movie. This this webpage is ugly. Yeah. What's with the yellow? No. Uh, yeah, I actually love... Oh, they even call it Love, Live, Die, Repeat. <laughs> That's what I mean. The mo- Everyone knows the movie is Live, Die, Repeat. Nobody really remembers Edge of Tomorrow. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um... I can't even get the part where he talks about the... This is a long interview, man. But it's it's all good, man. Like, you know, props to them. <laughs> okay, before we go, is there anything you can tell me about Edge of Tomorrow 2, which I believe is titled Live, Die, Repeat, Repeat and Repeat? Is that something you're cooking up with Tom Cruise after he finishes up the next two Mission Impossible movies? I'm hoping if we're going to do it, that would be the, that would be the, the time. And the script is done and everything? Yeah, the script is ready. All right. Thank you so much for your time, Doug. I really appreciate it, and I'm really looking forward to Impulse Season uh, 2 and hoping to see Edge of Tomorrow 2. They've died repeat and repeat as well as well down the line. Okay, thank you for support. I appreciate it. Okay, cool. So the script is finished. The, what, God, the, I would hope so. It's been fucking forever. Do you like <laughs> that name, Brad? Live, die, repeat, and repeat? Yeah, I actually do like that name. <laughs> That's actually not bad. <laughs> Either way, I don't know why they didn't go with that name. That's such a badass name, dude. That is well, and I think that's I think that somehow worked in their favor when they had that as the slogan. Nobody called it Edge of Tomorrow. Everybody called it Live Die Repeat. That that's what and you their called slogan it. Slogan is cooler than the title. <laughs> that's what you called it too, and you were like, Yeah, that uh, that 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 what's it called? The Tom Cruise movie, Live Die and Repeat. I'm like, Yeah. You mean, I mean Edge of Tomorrow? <laughs> yeah, that's 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 Edge of Tomorrow, but nobody nobody remembers it. It's Live Die Repeat because that's kind of what happens in the movie. Mm-hmm. So, and it's it's actually a really it's a pretty good movie. I mean, it's not uh, bad. I think it does deserve a sequel. Mm-hmm. But are you going to get butts in the seat so far after? It's it's questionable, especially yeah. Yeah. you know Tom Cruise is popular back then. Yeah. Tom Cruise is not as popular. We'll see how although, these next two although, do. Though. We'll see how these next is. two Mission Impossibles do. Well, and then he has um the the sequel to uh, uh Top Gun. Uh, Top Gun coming out, so th- this might be perfect timing. Honestly, I, I think so too, man. Uh, so, this next piece of news makes me laugh. Not because it's something I'm not going to do, but first of all, this is getting me really close to getting HBO Max for some reason, but also the fact that Studio Ghibli said that they were not planning on bringing any movies to a streaming service. Well, looks like uh, that's not the case here, man, it's because uh, Crunchyroll's got all the news here the Studio Ghibli films, except for Grave of the Fireflies, are coming to HBO Max. Yep. Which is hilarious because, if I remember correctly, Disney technically had some kind of prior yeah. rights to them. Well, no, now it now it's G Kids who has the rights to it. Yeah, now it's yeah. G Kids. I think Disney had them for a bit. Yeah, um, I'm gonna go ahead and zoom this in so I can actually read the article. Uh, but the upcoming HBO Max streaming service will launch in spring season of 2020. And thanks to a team up with the New York based film distributors, uh, G Kids, the service will often will offer something unique for animation fans access to Studio Ghibli's catalog of 21 feature length anime films. The films included in HBO Max distribution deals are Castle in the Sky, The Cat Returns, From Up on Poppy Hill, Howl's Moving Castle, Kiki's Delivery Service, My Neighbor Totoro, My Neighbors, The Yamadas. Nausicaa and the Va- of the Valley of the Wind, uh, Ocean Waves, Only Yesterday, Palm Poco, Ponyo, Porco Rosso, Rosso, Princess Mononoke, The Secret World of Arietti, Spirited Away, The Tale of the Princess Kagayo, Tale from Earthsea, When Marine Was Still There, Was There, Whisper of the Heart, and The Wind Rises. Referring to the distribution deal, Studio Ghibli chairman Koji Hoshiro stated, We are excited to be working with HBO Max to bring the complete collection of Studio Ghibli films to to streaming services, streaming audiences in the U.S. As a premium content brand, HBO Max is an an ideal home for our films. Upon launch of the service in in this spring, existing Ghibli fans will be able to enjoy their favorites and dwell deeper into the library. While while whole new audiences will be able to to discover our films for the first time, 
Um, spirited it away. My neighbor told her, oh, person Mononoke, Howl's Moving Castle, Kiki's Delivery Service, Ponyo, Castle in the Sky, The Tale of Princess Kaguya, and more will be available on launch via HBO Max with other films to follow them. For example, uh, Wind, The Wind Rises will debut in HBO Max during the fall of 2020. Oh, uh, good shit. All the good shit, man. Yeah. <laughs> Just the interesting thing is that they were like, no, we're not going to put these movies on streaming. We want to keep the theatrical experience. And then... I wonder how much money they put in their face. Well, I, I think what happened is uh, Disney didn't make an offer and they said, fuck you, Disney. Yeah. Yeah, fuck you, Disney. Yeah, G-Kids was like, all right, we'll take it to the HBO Max. And HBO got the money. So yep. HBO gets it. Uh, unfortunately, I mostly have all these on DVD, so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And this won't even, the the ones we want to watch for uh, Miyazaki Month won't even be published yeah, there. yeah. One is the wind rises for me. Yeah. So yeah. there you go. There you go. All right. So uh, Cowboy Bebop. We got some Cowboy Bebop news from the Netflix show over at Deadline.com. This is so sad. Uh, Nelly Andrevna Andreva. Uh, Cowboy Bebop Netflix series shuts down production for seven to nine months following star John Cho onset injury. Oh man. Uh, Netflix this is sucks. Yeah. That's like when we heard Harrison Ford guy injured. Yep. On the last Star Wars. Yep. Netflix's upcoming live action series Cowboy Bebop is going on lengthy hiatus following a knee injury sustained by lead uh, lead John Cho on the set of the show in New Zealand. Sources to d- describe the injury as a freak accident accident that happened on the last take of a routine and well rehearsed scene almost two weeks ago. It requires surgery for which Cho has been flown back to uh, Los Angeles and an extensive rehabilitation. The production shutdown is expected to last seven to nine months. The new filming schedule will be set once uh, Cho's progn- prognosis is clear. Uh, well, first of all, um, what's it called? Uh, all the uh, the get well soons to going to John Cho and, and him for uh, what's going on. This is this sucks, man. It, injuries suck a lot, but... Uh, it it sucks the most when uh when it when it happens to such a young actor who we're barely seeing pop because he's been popping for a bit right now and such a young actor having to take a injury like this it just sucks man. Yeah, and I, I know they they try to prevent this as much as they can, but sometimes shit just happens. Yeah, it happens, man. And hopefully he heals really quickly, and uh, hopefully this doesn't discourage uh, the studio from continuing on. And oh you know, no, I don't think so. I don't think so. I think that it's just going to take a bit. And it sucks, man, but uh, I'm still very excited to see this show. I'm excited to see uh, John Cho as um, as our wonderful Spiegel. So um, get well soon, John. Uh, John Cho and uh, let's go. Best of luck to the cast and crew as they have to basically... Because uh, I, I, now they're, now all that cast and crew is going to have to either wait or, you know, basically look for more work during the seven to nine month period. Yeah, they're they're going to have to find something to do for seven months. Yeah, that sucks, man. That sucks. But, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and uh, move on to the next one, Brad. Oh, man. Uh, so, for those of you who don't know, Tony Gilroy was the one who stepped in to do the reshoots for Rogue One. When it ha- so because Gareth Edwards was go- was going to do the, the what's it called the the what's it called was directed the film Gareth Edwards directed the film, but what's it called Tony Gilroy is kind of the ghost director of the of the movie because he stepped in to do a lot of the reshoots as well. Plus he helped rewrite the script a bit too, and it looks like we've got him on board to write the Cassian Andor series from Joe Otterson over at Variety.com. Uh, the planned Disney Plus ser- series centered on Rogue One character Cassian Andor is bringing on the film co-writer Tony Gilroy. Variety has learned exclusively Gilroy is set to write the pilot for the series in addition to directing multiple episodes. He will work alongside Stephen Schiff, who remains on board as showrunner. No official premiere date has been set, but Disney had previously indicated the show would debut in 2021. The untitled show focuses on rebel agent Andor prior to the events of Rogue One. In the early days of the rebellion against the Empire, the show has been described as a spy thriller when plans for it were first revealed last year. It also previously announced that Diego Luna would return as Andor, and while Alan Tudyk is set to reprise the role of K2SO, Andor's droid, Andor's droid psychic. I'm really happy about this, man. I actually like Rogue One a lot, you know? Um, uh, I really enjoy Rogue One. Um, that, that kind of told me 
when Rogue One came out, it was like, yeah, Disney is not fucking playing because mm-hmm. they, they made a movie that de- not, didn't necessarily tie in with everything else, although it kind of did at the end. Yeah. But they showed that even if it didn't tie in all the way, they still wanted to make a great Star Wars story. Yeah, and they made a, diff- a different kind of movie, man. Very, very yeah. warish. Yeah, very, very. They put the wars back in Star Wars for once. Yeah. So uh, yeah. go figure that one out. Well, that 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 whole scene at the at that planet with the beach and stuff was incredible, incredible <laughs> stuff yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. And, and as you're sitting watching this, I don't know if this deserves a spoiler alert or not, but you're sitting there, you're watching this, and you're learning about all these new great characters, and you're going, "Huh, wonder why I haven't heard about these guys before." And then at the end, you realize, <laughs> "Huh, that's why." <laughs> yep. Uh, what's it called? A uh, Suicide Squad, a uh, Star Wars story. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. But uh, my, uh, ten out of ten versus whatever the fuck Suicide Squad was. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, but no, look, I'm really excited about this. I'm really excited for this. This, I, I got. Look, I love Diego Luna. I'll take him in anything. But we're gonna get to concentrate more on the beginning of that, and this this will be like spy thriller. So I'm really excited for this, man. Do you think this guy looks like an old John Hamm? Yes, like old John I was about Hamm to bring that up. What the hell? <laughs> he looks a lot. Yeah, Tony Gilroy looks a lot like him. <laughs> oh I'm just God. looking. I'm going. That looks kind of like John Hamm, but old. <laughs> yeah. So, in other very interesting news. So, this is the last piece of news, and I, we had to really talk about this. Um, so, last weekend was the uh, the press conference for The Mandalorian. They shared at least 27 minutes of footage broken up between three minute, three, epi- three separate episodes. A lot of really good reactions. Uh, they were saying like this is this is one of, this is like the definitive Star Wars stuff that you're going to see on TV. It's amazing and they were like really really good reactions. But we have news that apparently season 2 is now filming and Carl Weathers is directing a, an episode. So uh they were talking uh, with uh, with Dave Filoni and John Favreau, and they let them know that season two has started production. And uh, this is no surprise. Let's face it: everyone who's everyone who knows is getting Disney Plus because of the Mandalorian. Mm-hmm. Yeah, when uh, because Disney launched a whole freaking Twitter thread of different shows, and literally the only thing that caught my eye was Mandalorian. Mandalorian. Uh, Mandalorian, Star Wars Rebels, and Star Wars The Clone Wars, just because I haven't watched those two shows, and I really want to watch them. And then, of course, Star Wars Mandalorian. So so th- this is basically when you make a $6 billion investment and know you did a good thing, mm-hmm. is when it's basically helping you set up your streaming service. Yep. So Carl Weathers wants to direct... Uh, Favreau has already said he wants to direct an episode in Season 2, and Filoni is likely to direct another as well. But Weathers will now be the second known cast member to also direct an episode as Taika Waititi. Thor Ragnarok directed a season one episode and voices IG-11. <laughs> it is unconfirmed, but Weathers will reprise his role as Karga in season two. We don't know because, well, the show hasn't been on yet. So um, this is awesome news. Look, this is this is Disney and not even Disney. Fucking Kathleen Kennedy trusting what these two have made in this show. And they're like, fuck it, let's just do it. Let's go ahead and start production on season two. Because, they, look, they had to have seen already the, the, the... Well, of course they already saw it. They filmed it. They were probably like, okay, we we got something special here. Let's fucking... Uh, I, I mean, the response from the fans even beforehand, they knew it yeah. was a good idea. It, 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 they didn't get no iffy responses. They were getting, yeah, everyone excited. Like, uh, almost 100%, I'm going to guess, except for those few fanboys who are still crying over over their cereal and their underwear on the couch. Yep. Anyways, but I think everyone's excited because this is probably the closest thing we're ever going to get to ever seeing a Boba Fett story in some Pretty form. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm really excited, man. I I mean, The Mandalorian is 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 the only reason I'm getting Disney Plus. So now to know that there's a season 2 coming, that's you that's me telling you that hey, I'm going to keep this Disney Plus for a while. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I, I might pull in what I did with HBO after Game of Thrones went out and cancel it, then resubscribe when the next season comes out. But yeah, I, I think it, it's safe to say that I will be one of us will be getting Disney Plus and then oh, yeah. sharing it to all our friends. Um, <laughs> you hear that from me though, uh, uh, and watching the Mandalorian. <laughs> oh my god, you didn't hear that from me though. <laughs> you didn't hear that from me though. Uh-uh. 
All right. Uh, let's hope the next uh, set photo we get is from the top of a Las Vegas strip club, right? Woo! I can't wait to see some alien tits. Yeah. And uh, with George, another picture of George Lucas at the set with uh, with John Favreau with uh, with his look, phone pointed at the at the light source, so you can get more light in there. Looking all depressed. Oh, George! <laughs> Gotta love George. Um, that, that that was that was George trying to figure out how to use his fucking cell phone. Pretty much, man. <laughs> but uh, th- th- God, this is awesome news, and that wraps up the rest of the the podcast. Uh, the what's it called news of the week? It's been a fun time, and. Uh, What's it called? No trailers. Not not no trailers. But uh, oh, those fuckers. We've got a trailer coming out later today because this comes out on Monday. Uh, what's it called? Trailers coming out during Monday Night Football. So during the uh, recording of the review, Brad and I will talk a little bit about that Force Awakens trailer, right? Uh yeah. I mean, Force Awakens. I'm sorry, Rise of Skywalker. Well, duh. Duh. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> we did a whole freaking duh. episode. What's it called? Uh, dedicated to the uh, Last the, Jedi yeah. trailer. My God, the very first episodes I was on on this thing was on Star Wars. So yeah, it was, yeah, that ain't going away anytime soon. Yeah, it's, it was a freaking awesome time, man. And if anyone's listening to this, uh, I guess Watchmen has dropped or is dropping yeah. tonight on I'm, HBO. Yeah, I'm gonna watch that right now. Actually, once we get I off here, I do not have HBO yet. So well, damn it, I wanted to review that on the live show. Um, well, we might, we look, still might. I, yeah. I, I, I'll have to see. I'll have to go into my bank and see how much money they'll give me. <laughs> come on, DC. Come on, Warners. You know you pay the man. Give him access already. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Warner Brothers, uh, help a brother out. Help a brother out. All right. Hey, you know, you know that's why Snoop Dogg signed with Warner Brothers, right? <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah. Warner Brother. <laughs> Warner Brother, help a brother out. All right, man. Let's go and move on to the housekeeping. I forgot to do the ad today, but yeah, this is a long episode. I don't think I was going to be able to remember that. Um, let's go ahead and, uh, get into the Patreon of, dude, gotta really give some love to my cousin, Tony. He came through. He is the 10th Patreon supporter and we have reached our goal. So now we are going to decide our, uh, comic book club, uh, first comic book to do for, uh, November. So. I thought we were letting the people decide or are we deciding? Oh, no, we're, 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 we're taking, uh, what's it called? Nominations from the people as well. Oh, okay. And we're going to compile it all into a list and they, they choose which one they want. The poll. We're gonna have a poll. So uh, just make sure that it's on Comicsology, my friends. And uh, we're taking requests over on uh, on um, on on Patreon, Patreon.com/slash Nerdcore. If if what's it called? If we don't get a uh, any requests, we're gonna have our own request, and then we're gonna have that poll up with that with our own nominations. So uh, would, would Sandman happen to be on Comicsology? I will check after we're done here. Okay. 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 So uh, we reached our goal. So our next goal is our audio movie commentaries. And Brad will shave his beard and Luis will shave his head. Bald. Bald. Fucking bald, Get Luis. It. Yep. Get it. I wonder if he'll do a Lex Luthor type of a what's it called, cosplay or something. But uh, yeah, so thank you so much to Tony for, uh, for, for pledging. And he's a $2 tier member. Pretty awesome. I, honestly, guys, when I tell you all to pledge to the tiers, I honestly really recommend you all pledge to the two dollar tier. And that's not just me because I want to get an extra dollar out of you, but uh, that's really an awesome tier, and you get a mini pot every week, and th- those are fucking awesome. Yeah, one dollar just basically says you love us. Two dollars says you want free yeah. shit. But even if you're at, even if you're at the one dollar tier, Brad, you get the you get the comic book club. Oh well, there you go. There you go. So patreon.com slash the nerd course, your RPS. Do it in time to get your nomination in there for Combo Club and listen to the first episode in November. So the poll will go up at the end November 1st and we will have, we'll be taking nominations until then. So, uh, let's go get in a, what's it called? Uh, go, go and check out the Patreon. But we got to really give some shout outs to our producers, uh, Cassie and Sarah, who are, uh, associate producers who, just did the first episode of Movie Club, and Movie Club was a pr- that was a really good episode, man. I had a lot of fun with that, and uh, I'm going to be announcing the director, the next director for November, and that should be a lot of fun. Yeah, you guys you talked should... about uh, Sofia Coppola. Yes, right? yes, sir. We three three movies from Sofia Coppola. We did uh, The Virgin Suicides, Lost in Translation, and The Beguiled. Beguiled. I don't know how we say it. Beguiled. I think beguiled. That's good timing with how her pops is. During the pot, <laughs> Papa, Papa Coppola, and like I said, I don't want to unless we bring it up in the live show. We'll talk about it in the live show, but I ain't covering that. I, I'm not opening the can of worms. 
I'm not. <laughs> you can go to my Twitter and you can check out how I feel about it, but uh, I'm not opening that kind of worms on here. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> what's it called? Uh, fun time. And you want to get the movie club, you go to $5 tier at the Patreon. So a uh, shout-out to our executive producers, though, Grayson Barker 98 Warner him in 98 That's uh, Instagram and Twitter. Grayson's awesome. He's the OG, and we love him. We love him for that. And uh, Shane is our other executive producer. Brad, can you tell us about Shane? Uh, you can follow our friend Shane, and more than that, he is the basically a co-host whenever <laughs> I can't show up. So uh, thank you, Shane, as always. It's appreciated. And you can follow our friend Shane at slash SWRKK or on his Twitter at SWRKK Twitch. Yeah, I have two people who I call in for backup when uh, when one of us can come on. It's Nikki and, 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 and Shane. And it, it, it's rare and far between, but it, it's good to know that Shane enjoys it enough where he comes on. <laughs> and I enjoy every episode Shane or Nikki is on because you get that 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 same kind of energy of they're just hyped just yeah. to be talking and doing and, and you know doing a podcast. So yeah. I, I'm very surprised they haven't. Nikki or Shane hasn't gone more into creating more and more podcasts. Yeah. Because I think they'd be really good at, but then again, they are streaming on Twitch. So yeah. they're they're kind of doing the same thing, but Pretty on much. video form. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what's it called? I always go back when Alex uh, Alex always tells me that the cut commentaries of Call of Duty commentaries that they used to do back in the day, that was basically podcasting at the beginnings of it, you know. It pretty much was a uh, really fun episode of the uh, live show this last weekend we did with uh, with Nikki and we did a review of Wolf Creek and Nikki was there just to have fun with us. And it was so much fun, dude. I, th- I think we got 20 clips. We pretty <laughs> much. <laughs> What's funny is I don't have 20 spots here on my stream deck for sound bites. <laughs> well, we, we got we got to figure that out because I'm sure there's some from Aiden to maybe yeah. a few from Leia. I, can, so. I guess I just got to make separate folders in here. Like what's it called? Like five folders of a uh, of a. Uh, of, well, and of sound I bites. think a tablet can like do the fifteen by fifteen one. I think there's that. Yeah, I don't know, man. But uh, it's either way. I would just put like separate folders of different sound bites in there. But it's awesome, and I it was a really fun time with uh, with them, and they're great people, man. Uh, so you guys can go check out the Nerdcore live show. It's on the feed. You can check out the video version on our YouTube, or you can just uh, wait for us to stream on this Saturday again. Brad, I might be out of my room on Saturday, so we might be doing a pre-taping of the live show. Okay, that, maybe that, well, that will be fine because I might, I might be out of house that day. Yeah, so we will keep you all posted on that. We might have a pre-taping, and uh, if anything, it will probably be talk shoot the shit again and end it with a review of uh, Watchmen uh, episode one. So. Uh, Brad can get to uh, using his other ways to watch the show. Uh, I'm just waiting for that check from Warner Brothers to, to <laughs> cash in. Yep. You know? So uh, with that being It'll said, show up one day. <laughs> so uh, yeah, you got guys, guys go and check out the live show. We'll, we'll keep you guys posted on that. Also, make sure you go to teespringcom store slash nerdcore <laughs> Check out our merchandise. Oh my god. Uh, rate and review your podcast on your podcast app of choice. Follow us on Twitter at the Nerdcore underscore Instagram at the Nerdcore Facebook page, Facebook group, the Nerd the Nerdverse, the official Nerdcore group. Also, go check out the website thenerdcore.com and check out the YouTube channel where we're putting a lot of our uh, videos on there. I know I have some that I need to put right now, but I was uh, updating my computer to the newest version of OS, so uh, was not. It's cool. It's cool. You got five waiting for you I, um, and High Flyer. Okay, cool. Uh, with that being said, though, it's been a wonderful time here. And uh, Brad, can we expect a uh, episode of Unstructured this week? Yes, you should be getting one. All right, cool. We're gonna get to hear the new music. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I heard uh, Jabril's. Uh, he really was pumped. Yeah, you didn't even see him, man. Music. You didn't see him, dude. He was moving <laughs> all around here. Yeah. So the High Flyer Radio uh, theme song was was playing really well with Jabril. So yeah, I was telling, you, I was telling you that that song is just hype. Yeah. All right, well, with that being said, it's been a wonderful time here, and I'm the Nerd Chicano, and I'm signing off. And Brad, will you please send them into the podcast void? All right, Ro. Thank you for being host as always. Thank you to all our listeners out there, all our Patreon supporters. Thank you for getting us to 10. We can't wait till we hit 20 Patreon supporters. Yeah, see you at the next time. Even more extras, yes. So let's keep moving, grooving, 
And I guess in the next episode, uh, we lose our heads during the hereditary review. Oh my God. Young Yoda out. <laughs>